So now it's my pleasure to invite to our virtual stage, Dr. Robert Zubrin, the founder and the president of the Mars Society with closing remarks. So if you're ready, please take it away. Thank you. So um, it's been uh, a great conference. And once again, I'd like to thank all the volunteers who made this possible people who are watching online. Um, you, know, you don't see the hands behind the stage, but there's plenty of them to make this thing work. And without these volunteers, this thing just couldn't happen. Um, it, this has been an incredible conference. We've actually had 140 talks, including 40 plenaries by uh, some very prominent speakers, DAP, NASA, Deputy Administrator, and other uh, space agency leaders, uh, space business leaders, space scientific leaders, including astrobiologists, astronomers, planetary scientists, engineers, technologists, people leading the way on space nuclear power and other critical systems. We've had educators, we've had philosophers, we've had historians. Uh, this is extraordinary. This is a movement. And in considering that this intellectual banquet, I, my mind went back to our founding convention, which occurred in 1998 in Boulder. 700 people showed up from all over the world. And by the way, I was very gratified that this conference, some of those people uh, who were there then are here now, Chris McKay, Karen Stoker, in Boston. Uh, I think Charles Cattell was there. Um, and, and, and in fact, uh, most of those were part of the Mars Underground that preceded the Mars Society and led to it. And of course, Bruce uh, McKenzie as well. Um, and the, uh, you know, but began to think about this thing and, and, and what happened then and what has happened since. You know, the founding convention, the Mars Society decided we did three things. Uh, outreach to spread the vision, political work to defend and expand the official Mars programs and uh, projects of our own. Um, the projects went forward. We built the Mars Arctic Research Station and then the Mars Desert Research Station and graduates of our programs went on to build high seas in Hawaii and, and, and in Polish station, in Austrian uh, uh, and Israeli space uh, analog programs as well. Uh, and the, the Mars Art Desert Research Station became the scene for the initiation of the University Rover Challenge. And, uh, and then which led to the Polish a European Rover Challenge and the Indian Rover Challenge. And thousands of people have participated as crew members in these analog stations and thousands more have uh, participated as part of design teams of the uh, Rover Challenges. Uh, it's incredible worldwide. And of course, we've held contests and we've had 170 teams design uh, Mars cities and have published the 40 best designs in two books. Uh, and, you know, this is going on. And, and, and but of all these things, while well, these are all quite tangible, I, I, I do think that the, the most effective thing we've done has simply been the spreading of the idea. Um, you know, by spreading this idea, we, we played a role in uh, recruiting uh, Elon Musk to uh, make Mars his calling, a person of incredible ability, and, and look what he's done, and the members of his team, and I can name many of them who were decided to make Mars their calling because of, of the vision that we've spread, and, and what they're doing is incredible. You know, here we are, we are on the brink right now. Uh, you know, this has been a long war, this has gone on now 23 years. And if you go back to the Mars underground, uh, 17 or before that, this is 40 years now since the first case for Mars conference. And the, the but we're making progress. Uh, you know, by this time next year, think about it. By this time next year, it is highly probable that Starship will have reached orbit. Fully reusable heavy lift launch vehicle designed for the purpose created for the purpose by a company created for the purpose of not only sending human explorers to Mars, but actually settling Mars for the full realization of, of, of the vision. But we need more of this. We need to keep spreading this vision um, because 
We need more Elon Musk. We need more Elon Musk in space industry. We need more Elon Musk equivalents in the arts. We need someone who will be as a bigger force in cinema, in pro Mars, pro space, pro enlightenment uh, cinema as Musk has been in, in, in the space industry. Because this is an expansive view of the future of humanity is what we are uh, carrying. And, and it, it won't be done by technology alone. Technology is key. Okay, but we're going to need talented uh, political uh, maneuverers. We're going to need talent, other additional talented businessmen. We're, we're going to need lawyers. We're going to need artists, poets, writers. We need all sorts of people. Okay, and we're going to need uh, a public that is prepared to support the endeavors. You know, People talk about the danger of global warming. There'd be no danger of global warming right now if the nuclear industry had not been stopped by a misled public. France has uh, decarbonized its electric grid. 25, 75% of French nuclear power, uh, of French electricity is, is nuclear. And the United States long since could have decarbonized its electric grid if nuclear power had been gone, allowed to go forward. But it was stopped due to, to a uh, lack of public support and is now just a marginal thing and we've got this problem. Well, we can be stopped by you, uh, achieving human expansion to space if, if, if the people do not understand this vision. So we have to spread this vision. And, um, and then now this effort, it's done largely by volunteers, but uh, the peop a lot of things we do can't be done for free. You can't publish books for free. You can't run the station for free. You can't do all sorts of things for free. Uh, so we've done this conference with free admission because we want everyone all over the world, regardless of their means, to be able to attend. But if you've got some means, please contribute. And now, in conclusion, I, going back to this, it, it, my memory of, of the founding convention, you, you should know that we had a document at the founding convention. It was called the Founding Declaration of the Mars Society. And it's still posted online on our website and on the websites of many of our uh, national chapters that translate into foreign languages as diverse as you know, Chinese, Russian, all sorts of languages. Uh, and it, it states our ideals. It was signed by every person who attended the founding convention of the Mars Society including some uh, rather uh, distinguished individuals. Mike Griffin later became NASA administrator, was a signer of the founding declaration of our society. John Young, a great astronaut, okay, who flew to the moon with Apollo and, 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 and uh, it was the captain of the first shuttle flight. Um, he signed the founding declaration of the Mars society. And so did everyone there. And it states our ideals, it, it states why we're doing this. And, you know, because people are asking why, why is it so important that this be done? And so um, I've asked now uh, Jim Burke, and he's done this, to uh, create a place at our founding declaration of the Mars Society on the website where you can sign it too. Because I know that most of the people who are around the Mars Society today were either very young or but not born yet in 1998. Well, you can be a signature to this document too. And I, I, it's a very noble document. Um, the, 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 uh, I contributed significantly to it, as did uh, Chris McKay and uh, the author Kim Stanley Robinson all contributed to the formulation of this document. And um, I, 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 I think it's worth hearing. So I'm going to read it. Okay. This is the founding declaration of the Mars Society, unanimously adopted by the attendees of the founding convention, August 1998, Boulder, Colorado. The time has come for humanity to journey to the planet Mars. We're ready. Though Mars is distant, we are far better prepared today to send humans to the red planet than we were to travel to the moon at the commencement of the space program. Given the will, we could have our first cruise on Mars within a decade. The reasons for going to Mars are powerful. We must go for the knowledge of Mars. Our robotic probes have revealed that Mars was once a warm and wet planet suitable for the hosting of life origins. But did it? A search for fossils on the Martian surface or microbes in the groundwater below could provide the answer. If found, they would show that the origin of life is not unique to the Earth and by implication reveal a universe that is filled with life and probably intelligence as well. From the point of view of learning our true place in the universe, this would be the most important scientific enlightenment since Copernicus. 
We must go for the knowledge of Earth. As we begin the 21st century, we have evidence that we are changing the Earth's atmosphere and the environment in significant ways. It has become a critical matter for us to better understand all aspects of our environment. In this respect, comparative planetology is a very powerful tool, a fact already shown by the role Venusian atmospheric studies played in our discovery of the potential threat of global warming by greenhouse gases. Mars, the planet most like Earth, will have even more to teach us about our home world. The knowledge we gain could be the key to our survival. We must go for the challenge. Civilizations, like people, thrive on challenge and decay without it. The time has passed for human societies to use war as a driving stress for technological progress. As the world moves towards unity, we must join together, not in mutual passivity, but in common enterprise, facing outward to embrace a greater and nobler challenge than that which we previously posed to each other. Pioneering Mars will provide such a challenge. Furthermore, a cooperative international exploration of Mars would serve as an example of how the same joint action could work on Earth in other ventures. We must go for the youth. The spirit of youth demands adventure. A Humans to Mars program would challenge young people everywhere to develop their minds to participate in the pioneering of a new world. If a Mars program were to inspire just a single extra percent of today's youth to scientific educations, the net result would be tens of millions more scientists, engineers, inventors, medical researchers, and doctors. These people would make innovations that create new industries, find new medical cures, increase income, and benefit the world in innumerable ways to provide a return that will utterly dwarf the expenditures of the Mars program. We must go for the opportunity the settling of Mars, of the Martian New World, is an opportunity for a noble experiment in which humanity has another chance to shed old baggage and begin the world anew, carrying forward as much of the best of our heritage as possible and leaving the worst behind. Such chances do not come often and are not to be disdained lately. We must fight for our humanity. Okay. Human beings are more than merely another kind of animal. We are life's messenger. Alone are the creatures of the earth. We have the ability to continue the work of creation by bringing life to Mars and Mars to life. In doing so, we shall make a profound statement as to the precious worth of the human race and every member of it. We must go for the future. Mars is not just a scientific curiosity. It is a world with a surface area equal to all the continents of the earth combined, possessing all the elements that are needed to support not only life, a technological society. It is a new world filled with history waiting to be made by a new and youthful branch of human civilization that is waiting to be born. We must go to Mars to make that potential a reality. We must go not for us, but for a people who are yet to be. We must do it for the Martians. Believing therefore that the exploration and settlement of Mars is one of the greatest human endeavors possible in our time, we have gathered to found this Mars society understanding that even the best ideas for human actions are never inevitable, but must be planned, advocated, and achieved by hard work. We call upon all other individuals and organizations of like-minded people to join with us in furthering this great enterprise. No nobler cause has ever been. We shall not rest until it succeeds. Thank you. Let's do it for the Martians. See you next year.